So continuing on the theme of sole trader accounts, I thought we'd have a look at this question, Amir, from June 2017's ACCN2 paper. Um, this one is more concerned with the statement of financial position, but rather than getting you to draft one, it's actually given you a list of um, corrections, errors that need doing, things that have been omitted, um, and then asked you to do this in a sort of table format. So obviously thinking through the double entry and thinking through how each of these adjustments would affect the following categories. So non-current assets, current assets, current liabilities, and capital. Um, and obviously remembering that anything that affects the income statement or the owner's drawings or the owner's capital is gonna have an impact on the capital account. So it really does get you to think through the, the dual effect of all of these adjustments. So it says there that Amo is a sole trader who runs a successful retail business. He's drafted the financial statements for the year ended 30th of April, 2017, and the summarized balance sheet statement of financial position is shown below. And they've transferred all of those figures onto the answer grid there for you. It also tells you that included in the current asset sec current assets section is the bank account, which has a debit balance of 10850. So it's a debit balance, it's an asset, belongs in current assets. So that means he's got money in the bank. Okay, so it says that Amir has identified some items that were not included or where he's unsure of the correct accounting treatment. So the first one there on the 30th of April, Amir wrote a check from the business bank account for £500 to pay the deposit for his holiday. No entries have been made to record this transaction. So he's written a check. So if he's written a check, it has to come out of the bank account. So therefore, they've already done this one for us. But it's always good to just check that you understand the logic that's been applied. So £500 is coming out of the bank account. That's why there's a deduction to current assets. But there's also a deduction over here on the capital account. Um, because he's taken drawings, the deposit on holiday is a personal expense, so that's going to be added to his drawings. And if you think about it, drawings has a negative effect on the capital of the business. Okay, so deduction from current assets for the bank and a deduction because of the drawing. So we can tick that one off. I'm not going to get any marks for that, but at least we understand um, the process before we move on. So number two, Amir rents out part of his premises to another business. The rental for the year is £12,000. But the rent received recorded in the books of account for the year ended 30th of April 2017 amounted to 14,000. So that means he's received 2,000 pounds worth of rent in advance. So income received in advance is actually a current liability because it's a, um, it's prepaid income. So we need to add 2,000 pounds into the current liabilities. We're also going to need to take 2,000 pounds out of the capital account because if we reduce the rent from 14,000 down to 12,000, our profit will go down by 2,000 pounds. So that's going to reduce his capital account balance. Okay, so that's number two dealt with. Then we've got number three, a check that was received from Ferdinand Limited on the 28th of April, 2017 for 1,250. Ferdinand Limited was liquidated, so that means it went into receivership on the 30th of November 2015, and the amount owing of 2,500 was written off as a bad or irrecoverable debt in the income statement for the year ending 30th of April 2016. So that's the year before the one we're dealing with. So they've already written off an irrecoverable debt of 2,500. Amir is unsure of the correct accounting treatment for the cheque received on the 28th of April 2017, and so has not yet entered it in the cash book or included it in the draft financial statements. So we can ignore this 2,500, that's an irrecoverable debt that was written off last year, but we've got 1,250 pounds which is an irrecoverable debt recovered, okay? So that's gonna increase our profit. I'm gonna put that straight into the income statement. So the profit will go up by 1,250. That will be treated as other income. And we've also got 1,250 pounds going into the bank account, which if you remember, is sat under current assets. Okay, so that's that one dealt with. Um, number four, the trade receivables of 24,600 have been included in the current assets section of the balance sheet, statement of financial position. On the 14th of April, 2017, Amir received notification that one of his customers was declared bankrupt and that he would not receive the 600 pounds he's owed. No entries have been made in the books of account to record this. So this is an actual irrecoverable debt. So we need to take that off of the, um, trade receivables. So trade receivables are in current assets. So we're going to reduce those by £600. And we're going to be writing that off as an expense. So profit will go down by 600 Therefore, the capital account will be reduced by £600. Again, 
So number five, Amir is unsure of the treatment of the provision for doubtful debts. Now, just to remind you, the provision for doubtful debts is a deduction under trade receivables, which are under current assets. But because the provision for doubtful debts account shows a credit balance at the 1st of May 2016 of £800, Amir has included this in the current liabilities section of the Statement of Financial Position. So it's been included in here. It shouldn't be. We're going to need to take it out of there. So the first thing we can do is remove £800 from the current liabilities section. But let's just see how much it needs to be. It says Amir wishes to maintain the provision at 3% of the trade receivables. Now, if you remember, the trade receivables was 24,600. That was given to us up here in number four, but we wrote off an irrecoverable debt. So we're gonna apply that 3% to 24,000 pounds, which is gonna be, let's do that on the calculator, not trusting my mental arithmetic, 720 pounds. Okay, but he's already got £800 in there. So we're going to need to reduce the provision for doubtful debts by the difference, £80. So that's going to go into the capital section. We're going to increase profit by £80. So we're going to add that to the capital section. Oh, I'll put that in the wrong place. Apologies. Pop that in there, £80. And then the £720 is going to be deducted from the current assets. So we're going to take £720 away from current assets. We've reduced current liabilities by 800, that 800 pounds should never have been there. And then this 80 pounds is the difference between the 800 brought forward and the 720 we need at the end of the year. Okay, that's number five sorted out. Number six then, Amir purchased new fixtures and fittings during the year at a cost of 40,000 pounds. It is his policy to depreciate fixtures and fittings owned at the end of the year using the straight line method at a rate of 25% per annum. The costs of the fixtures and fittings and the depreciation for the year were correctly accounted for. So he's dealt with that 40,000, that's gone to the right place, and he's already done the depreciation on that. However, Amir also paid £3,000 to have the fixtures and fittings installed. He has debited this amount to repairs. If you remember, when we're looking at the cost of an asset, any costs in getting it into a position and a, a state to be able to be used um, is included as part of the capital cost and needs to be added to non-current assets. So we're going to be taking that £3,000 out of repairs. It shouldn't be there. It should be treated as a non-current asset. So we're going to add £3,000 to non-current assets. We're taking it out of repairs. So that's going to actually increase our profit. So we're adding £3,000 um, into there, um, into the capital account for the, uh, the additional profit. But we also need to do 25% of that as depreciation. So 25% 3,000 is 750. So we're going to be taking that away, 750 off of there and 750. It's a bit of a mess because of my previous error um, coming off of there. So the net effect is that non-current assets are going up by 2,250 and the capital account is also going up by 2,250. 3,000 for the um, removal of the capital expenditure that shouldn't have been in repairs and then a reduction of 750 to profit to allow for that depreciation on the 3,000 pounds. Okay, nearly there. The last piece of information we're given is that a delivery van was sold on the 28th of April 2017. It originally cost 27,000 and had accumulated depreciation of 15,000 when it sold. So that means that the net book value at the date of sale was 12,000 pounds. Amir received a check for 13,950 for the sale. So that means he's made a profit of 1,950. That's the difference between the net book value and the sale proceeds. No entries have been made in the books to record uh, in the books of account to record the sale of the delivery van. Okay, well, we need to get rid of the delivery van out of non-current assets. We're going to take £12,000 out of there. We're going to add one nine fifty to the capital account, which is the um, profit on the disposal of that non-current asset. And we're also going to need to add thirteen nine fifty into our current assets. Okay, so that's the double entry complete there. We're debiting current assets, we're crediting non-current assets, and we're crediting the income statement. So the only thing we need to do now is just to add the totals up to come up with some revised figures. When we're doing this, don't forget to add in the figures that have already been done for you. Very often I see students that have just completed, you know, just done the additions and um, subtractions on the figures that they've written in in their own handwriting. Don't forget to include the things that have already been put in for you. 
Okay, so I paused the video while I added and subtracted all of these figures. So this is what we end up with for these revised totals. Now, what we need to make sure is that the statement of financial position still agrees. So if you look up here, the non-current assets, if we add the non-current assets to the current assets, take away the current liabilities, we get back to capital. So remember, assets minus liabilities equals capital. And all of these adjustments we've done actually balance in terms of the double entry. So here we've credited current assets, we've debited capital. So the two cancel each other out. So we should find that that's the case all the way along here. We've um, debited, or we've cre sorry, credited current liabilities and we've debited capital. Um, so the same applies all the way through here. Um, and then when we get down to the bottom, we could just do a quick double check that the total of the non-current assets plus the current assets minus the current liabilities does equal that 310380. One extra little piece on this um, question, a little one mark multiple choice question. It says tick one box to show the correct definition of the going concern concept. So um, quite random there. Assets will be valued at market price as the business will need to replace these assets in future. Well, I don't think it's that one. Remember the going concern um, concept is the presumption that the business will continue to trade for the foreseeable future. Assets will be valued at the lower of cost and net realizable value. Students concept. Assets will be valued at cost as it is assumed that the business will continue for the foreseeable future. My money's on that one, but let's just check with this one. Assets will be valued in the same way each year. No, so that one's consistency. That one is the prudence concept. Um, that one is irrelevant. Um, so yeah, definitely that third one there. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, watch out for future releases in the run up to the 2023 exams.